Good evening and welcome back to our studies on Christian Assembly, episode number 30. I am glad to invite you all this evening to our series of studies on Christian Assembly. In the past 12 episodes, we have so far covered up to almost all the fundamentals of the studies on Christian Assembly. In the last class, we have studied about the four different laws, the five different laws of the Christian Church, which is governed in the New Testament. They are respectively the law of unity, the law of diversity, the law of conservation, the law of activity, and then finally, the law of authority. In the previous class, we have been able to discuss only the first session of these five points. That is the law of unity. The law of unity necessarily speaks about the one body concept of the church which is given to us in Ephesians and Corinthians. We have already learned there seven aspects which speaks about the unity of the church, the law of the unity. Those seven aspects are one flock, one family, one temple, one body, one house, one kingdom, and then one priesthood. In all, all the subpoints I gave you, <clears throat> the proper references from the Holy Bible, which uh, speaks about this one body relationship. And today, what we are going to discuss is the second point, the third and the fourth and fifth points. The second point is actually <clears throat> the law of unity in diversity. The Bible speaks about the law of unity, simultaneously the law of diversity. I would uh, briefly explain this. There is a law of unity which is putting all the members together into one body relationship on which Jesus Christ is the spiritual head. And the believed believers are different members of that one body functioning together for the, for the common good of the body. But if there is a unity in diversity, so in one sense it is said that it is a law of unity putting all the members together in a functional organism. I hope that you would remember what I said to you in the, in the last class that the church is not an organization, as many falsely think in these days. There is an organizational setup in the in the church gathering, that is true, but church in its necess necessary existence is not an organization, but it is a functional organism. There is difference between functional organism and a functional organization. Many people wrongly, they think, uh, think and act in the organization, suspecting that the Church of Jesus Christ is an organization, forgetting the concept and ideology that it is a living organism. The unity in diversity is well described in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 20. I would uh, invite your attention here to that particular portion of scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 20, Paul says here, but now there, there, there are many members at one body. See, verse number 18 onwards I will read it. But now God has set the members, each one of them in the body, as it is placed in. That means, when you and I were born again, we were placed in the body of Jesus Christ, not according to our wish or desire, 
but according to the desire of the one who has saved us. That means when we were born again, the Spirit of God placed each of us into the mystic body of Christ in its respective place where he decided, decided that we should, we should be indebted. So we have occupied a place of authority and a place of function within the body as a functional member according to the uh, will and desire of the one who has placed us there on the body. I hope that this explanation would suffice. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? Paul is asking that if they were, if they were all one member, then where is the body? So he is telling the body of Jesus Christ is comprised of many members. So he says in actual verse number 20, but now they are many members, yet one body. They are many members, yet one body. Okay, let us go on to that. Here the Bible says, the body is mentioned in a singular form. There is no bodies to Christ, but only one body. You remember, when a marriage ceremony is conducted, the minister who conducts the service finally will exhort the couples, saying, your family life is a miniature of the relationship between Christ and his church, which is his bride. That means every Christian marriage is a mini a miniature of the the marriage the marriage between the Lord Jesus Christ and His Church, which is His bride. And therefore, He says, as the body is in total subjection to the head, so also the Bible tells us that the church should be in total or sublime submission to the headship of Christ, who is the authority of the body. One body but many members. That is unity in diversity. In the first section, I have already discussed what is the unity, the law of unity. It's scattered around seven different uh, figures. As such, I explained to you as one flock, one family, one temple, one body, and one house, one kingdom, and then one priesthood. It is scattered around in different verses like that. But when it comes to think about the unity in diversity, as for 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 20, Paul says that we are all one body, but many members. No member should boast against another member. There may be larger members, smaller members, richer members, poorer members, weaker members, and strong members, no matter whatever it might be. The Bible says you are fixed in a respective place in the functional organism of this mystic body. In that body, no member should boast against another member. Romans chapter 12, verse 3 to 5. Okay, let us read that words. Romans chapter 12, verse 3 to 5. Paul very clearly instructs the believers of Rome. Therefore I say, through the grace given to me, I for I say through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, that Paul is exhorting every believers at the church of Rome, saying them not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. Then he says, for as we have many members in one body, listen here, as we have many members in one body, and all the members do not have the same function, and he says in a physical body, there are many members, but one body. All the members constitute one perfect body. And he says that all the members do not have the same function. Members differ in their functions. So we being many are one body in Christ. 
he says, whether you are Romans or Corinthians or Galatians or Ephesians or Philippians or Colossians or Hebrew Christians, whoever you may be, you are all in one body at the same time, different members. So we being many are one body in Christ and everyone members of one another. This is the, these, these verses clearly expresses what is the unity in diversity. It says that every born again believer is a member of the mystic body of Jesus Christ. And God has placed each member in the body according as it is said where he should be placed. And therefore the born again member has no right or no specific authority to be in a particular place in the body. God decided it. God decided it. Which should be your place in the body and what function you should have. Therefore the Holy Spirit of God says there should not be any differences of caste, color, culture or education in the church or in the body. So as humanly speaking there are differences of caste, color, culture, education and uh, uh, languages. But in the church when it comes to the body function, Paul says that there is no distinction as to caste, color, culture or education. The primary requirement is that a sinner to be saved, that he should be placed in the mystic body of Jesus Christ. The members of the church may be members of different denominations. So today in Christendom, we have so many sectarians and denominations. Some people they believe they are the only born again believers bound to heaven. I think that this is a kind of bossy, bragging about, about their spiritual position. The same danger the Jewish people had when the Lord Jesus Christ was ministering here on the face of the earth. When the Lord came to them preaching the kingdom of God, these people said that we are the descendants of Abraham and we are his children. And then the Lord Jesus Christ retorted them, if you were Abraham's children, you could have believed in me because Abraham desired to see my days and he has seen it and he has rejoiced. But Jesus added that ye are the children of the devil. He is the father of the lie. He is the father of lie from the beginning. You are the children of the devil. And if you really say, confess, that you are the descendants of Abraham, then you, <coughs> you would necessarily believe in me. <coughs> but they said that I have Abraham our father. We do not want to believe in you because you say that you are the son of God. You are coming down from heaven and coming down from the Father. But we have only one God. <coughs> we serve Him, the Lord Lord Jehovah. And Moses have shown to us that that God uh, from the past in time, and our forefathers have been serving Him, believing in Him, and we are his, their, their natural descendants. Okay, all their claims might be true. But Jesus said, ye are the children of the devil. And he is a liar. And the father of all lies he is the father. He is a he is the father of lies. He is a he is a liar and father of all lies. Okay, here Paul says the members of each church may be different in denomination. There are Mardamites, Jacobites, Orthodox, Roman Catholics, Latin Catholics, Syro Malabarian, as well as uh, many 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 independent groups, Pentecostals, Charismatics, Brethren. Baptist, and uh, there may be so many denominations and uh, uh, sectarians. Doesn't matter. Paul says, the members of the church, I'm talking about the universal church, I'm not talking about the local church. The members of the local church may be uh, different members <coughs> from different uh, <coughs> denominations. They will be different members from different uh, denominations. Yet we should have uh, Love, have love and concern or for them members of one body. That means you don't say since he is a Marthamite believer even though he is not again I cannot love him I, or I cannot consider him because 
He is a Marthoma believer. Okay, he, is, he may be having his membership in a Marthoma church, but in the sight of God, if he is born again, that particular person in a Marthoma church is born again, he is added to the membership of the body of Jesus Christ, which is his universal church. And therefore, you, he and you uh, serves the same blessings from this same body. And the same head, the Lord Jesus Christ is in control of that body. So never say that we should have love and concern for them as members of one body. And he says, if any member do suffer or enjoy immediately, the head recognize it and pass it on information to the other members of the body. So give, Paul gives here a good picture. And he is picturing the composition of the mystic body of Jesus Christ to our physical body. Our physical body has many members, but one head. And this head is the head is the controlling station uh, of the body and all the nourishment that the body is necessitated are receiving from the head, not the body is manufacturing itself. The blessings and the 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 spiritual blessings as well as the vitality the body receives from the head, not from anywhere. In the same way Paul says there, you are members of different churches and different denominations. But if you are a born again Christian, the Holy Spirit of God has placed you in his mystic body of which the Lord Jesus Christ is the head. The spiritual body, which is the, uh, the church, <coughs> receives all its vitality from the spiritual head, who is the Lord Jesus Christ. Wherefore he says, even though the members are from different denominations or sectarians, still we are enjoying and then uh, suffering the same pain or goodness in the body. For example, it says, if one member suffers, the whole body suffers. <clears throat> if one member suffers, the whole body suffers. If one member enjoys, the whole body enjoys. Why? Because you see, for example, we have five fingers here in this farm. And a mosquito landed on one of the fingers and suppose is biting you. Immediately, the nerve system uh, passing to this uh, finger will give the information immediately to the oblongata, which is the spinal end. And soon, the, the determination or decision have been taken there in the spinal end or in the cerebral realm and uh, the command is already given the eyes to look onto the particular portion or particular finger where, where on the mosquito is biting. So you will look to your finger where the mosquito has landed and is biting you. Soon the brain will give the next command, secondary command, the right hand to lift and give a blow so that the mosquito may die. These all actions happening within a twinkling of an eye, that means within a second or moment. Such fast fast communication, the nerve system given to the brain and the reaction of the brain finally resulted in the killing of the mosquitoes by a blow. He says that you have been able to recognize the pain of the mosquitoes bite because the concerned nerve system from your brain were are uh, passed on to passed on even to the end of your the finger. So when the mosquitoes bite you. Uh, the nerve system takes that pain to the brain directly and then the brain, brain recognize, realize that some unwanted object is disturbing you on your finger. So immediately brain commands the eyes to have a look on it and the eyes looked at and so when mosquito was taking your blood and was biting you and secondary command was served by the brain to the right hand to just lift it up and give a blow to the mosquito's back. And mosquito is collapsed. This is the functional uh, organism walks about. So in the same way Apostle Paul says there, 
even though the members of the body of Jesus Christ differ from different denominations, yet we should have love and concern for them as members of one body. If any member do suffer, the whole body suffers, and if any member enjoy, enjoys, the whole body enjoys. Immediately the head recognizes it and passes on information to the other members of the body, as I explained to you just before. So whatever the suffering the members have in the mystic body of Jesus Christ is passed on to the head, and the head realizes it. At the same time that whatever the enjoyment the body has is also been passed on to the, the head of the body, which is the Christ, and then the whole body share in that enjoyment. The law number four. So we have learned the law of unity that speaks about one body relationship, the law of the unity of diversity. That is, even though we are members of one body, still we are different members and each member has a different function. I will explain in the next law, that is the law of conservation. Law of conservation tells about each member needs to take care of one another. Paul says that in 1 Corinthians 12, 25 and 26. Okay, let us have a look at it. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 25 and 26. Where Apostle Paul says that there should be no schism in the body. There should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. That's, this is the law of conservation. The members uh, should have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, he says, if one member suffers, all the members suffers with it. If your finger has the pain, the whole body uh, suffers, that, suffers that pain. That he says, if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. You understand that? If one member suffers, the whole member suffers. The one member is enjoying, the whole member is rejoicing with it. That is the law of conservation. So in, in caring each other, while the members one caring each other, there should not be any differences of caste, color or culture or education. Don't go for any cultural or educational differences. Uh, ask now the Church of God group is having the state and division in, among them. Uh, the people who are coming from the lower religion, they have a special gathering within the church is, and they are known as the Church of God full gospel division. And then the, the Syrian Christians who are born again from that background, they have set up their own gatherings known as Church of God Full Gospel. There is no such a uh, such a differences to be paid within the body because God set no such a cultural or educational or caste or color differences. The members of the church may be members of different denominations said, never do that. And fourthly it says the law of activity. The law of activity. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 16. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 16. And ever we read, From whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Is there the law of activity? The law of activity is actually at least there are in three stages. Uh, verse number 4, 12, 13, and 4, 16. Chapter 4, verse 12 and 13. And he says, And he himself gave some, some be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors, and some teachers, for the perfecting of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Listen here. The law of activity is spread around three stages. Number one, the purpose is spiritual growth. 
the reason why the, these spiritual ministers are given, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to the church, as ministers to the, the church, the reason is, number one, the purpose is spiritual growth. Spiritual growth of the members. Number two, activities. That 416 says, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its shades, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. So he says, the activities together in cooperation. In a church, every members are cooperating each other and contributing each other for the common good of the body as its function together. That's the formula of Paul says here. So purpose is spiritual growth. Activity is together in cooperation, not independent. And thirdly, the result to achieve the Christian maturity. Paul says that the very purpose of uh, giving these fivefold ministries to the congregation is that the saints should be brought into Christian maturity. The believers are to be brought into Christian maturity. And finally, in this series, I'll say, I'll also tell a few words about the law of authority. So we have so far discussed the law of unity, the law of diversity, the law of conservation, the law of activity, and then we have the law of authority. Philip Colossians, the book of Colossians, chapter 1, verse 18. Colossians chapter 1 verse 8. And he is the head of the body. Who? Jesus Christ is the head of the body. The church who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. That in all things he may have the preeminence. Paul says here that he is the preeminent person. And he is the firstborn from the dead. And also he is the head of the body. Therefore, in verse, chapter 2, verse 18 and 19, chapter 2, verse 18 and 19, Paul instructs the readers of the book of Colossians, let no one defraud you of your reward. He says that let no one defraud you of your reward. Taking delight in false humility and worship of angels, intruding into those things of which he has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, Verse number 19, continue to listen here. And not holding fast to the head from whom all the body nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments increases with the envies which is from God. Okay, here Paul says that the hold the head tightly. We as members of the body, you and I have to hold the head tightly. That means we have to hold the Christ tightly with our faith and with our trust, all the vitality, as I reminded you just a few minutes before, all the vitality the body requires for its prop proper growth and functions, body received from the head, which is the fullness of the Godhead. Jesus Christ is the fullness of the Godhead and a body is neatly connected together to this body and therefore Paul says, all the vitality the body requires for her spiritual growth is received from the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the fullness of the Godhead. Who is the fullness of the Godhead. Okay, again in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 16, for this reason the body should be always under the subjection and authority of the head. Just few minutes before the beginning of the class, I said that when the marriage is conducted by the Christian minister, he reminds the couples that uh, the, 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 the wife is the body of the husband and the husband is the head of the body. Therefore, uh, the body, as the body, the, as the church of Jesus Christ is in total and sublime submission to the headship of the Lord Jesus Christ, likewise, the wives are to be submitted to their husbands in sublime submission. So as the body, a body and in a body and head relationship, 
the body is always in, is subjected to the the head, headship which is the Lord Jesus Christ because the body receives also its vitality from the head which is the fullness of God. Colossians chapter 2 verse 3 and James 1 5 and Colossians 2 3 and Colossians 2 19 3 3 and 4 all these verses the fullness of life is in the head and hence the body always have the same life of the head which is which what he, the head has. So listen here Jesus Christ is the fullness of the Godhead and, and that as the church is neatly connected to this head, the, the church receives all its functional vitality from the head, which is the, uh, the wisdom of God or fullness of the Godhead. May God bless you this evening. We have studied about five different unity of the church of Jesus Christ. And uh, that differences of unity I have been discussing here. The law of unity and the law of diversity, the law of conservation, the law of activity, and then finally the law of authority. May the Lord help you continue to study this subject in a systematic way as you continue to listen to this studies here in which uh, we shall be uploading also into my YouTube uh, channel so that at any moment, at any time in your life, you can search it and rehear it. May God bless you all in his service. Evangelist Titus from Yedayamla. Thank you.